Hello and welcome. In this challenge, I've set a goal for myself to try and program the famous snake game on a small LCD screen programmed using the Arduino Nano and accompanied by two designed PCBs. This will be particularly interesting since all of my projects so far involving programming a microcontroller or a microprocessor such as a Raspberry Pi use relatively easy programming. I mean, come on, it's Python. This time it's quite a lot lower level and the choice of language is C. The last coding challenge I did was over two years ago and was an introduction to the introduction of the whole programming Minecraft in the web series. Nevertheless, I'm quite excited for this one, so let's get right into it. So I did mention that I had to use an Arduino, but also two designed PCBs. Now these PCBs were pre-designed and you can see their schematic up on the screen right now. Essentially, my task was just to solder on all the components, the buttons, the LEDs, the transistors, the diodes, and the resistors, and so on. And although the soldering wasn't a very hard job, I'd never really done it extensively before, so there were a few beginner mistakes. Now, the Arduino has its pins grouped in letters. These groups are called ports, and each port can take 8-bit values, which shows whether the pins are an input or an output, or whether the pin is giving an on or off signal. 1 means on or output, and 0 means off or input. Simply the initial setup of the pins to be used are PD7 to PD4 for LEDs. I'll explain why I'll be using LEDs afterwards. And these all will be output pins. Also, all of the port D pins will be output pins. And the initial state of the LEDs will be that all of them are off. In addition to this, PC0 to PC3 for button pins and PC0 to PC3 also will have pull-ups enabled since we're going to use buttons for the inputs. The next step was to combine all the components, the controller PCB, the Arduino's PCB, and the LCD. So the programming was slightly harder than when I coded Snake and JavaScript, but this challenge actually made me realize many simpler and more efficient algorithms for coding the Snake game. The algorithm which I realized was as follows. So we have an X and a Y variable for the X and Y positions of the head of the snake. And along with this, we have a variable for its direction. Now suppose that the snake is three squares long, so the snake is eaten twice. One way to show the snake here is having variables called tail x, tail y, and directions, or dirs. Visually, this looks something like this. Essentially, each iteration in each array goes with the same iteration in the other arrays. So in this case, the head of the snake is at position 5, 1, and is going right. The next part of the snake is one square to the left, and is also going right. So how do you use this in practice? A simple method to do this is if we show the head of the snake first, and then in the next frame we update the coordinates of the next part of the snake by telling it what the head's coordinates were previously. In this way, the next part of the snake will remember where the head of the snake was, and we can set its coordinates to be where the head was. Using a simple looping process, this can be done to all the parts of the snake. Do note that the loop will go up to a certain number n, which represents the length of the snake. If the snake then eats, all you have to do is increase n by 1. So that sums up the algorithm in a very simple way. So the coding was initially a disaster. The first time I ran it, I got the most unexpected result on the LCD. Here's a quick overview of the process. So the next step was to somehow show the score of the user, and this was almost impossible to show up on the LCD due to the limited space, so what I ended up using were the 4 LEDs on the controller PCB. Now you might be thinking, 4 LEDs? That can only be keeping track of a maximum score of 4. Well, not really. If you show the score in binary rather than decimal, this maximum possible score, which can be displayed, is 15, which is pretty good and pretty hard to get in this version of the game. Ultimately, this was an epic challenge to work on. Definitely, it was a lot harder than doing the same in JavaScript or in the Raspberry Pi. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and see you next time.